Hello everyone, my name is Decker Link, the trained on professional, and welcome back to Black Gate. Um, people outside. Literally, as soon as I start fucking recording, people outside gotta be talking and shit. On the last episode, I we uh, got killed again. On this one, we're seemingly going to go to Sooth's funeral. Also, uh, based off of the subject I broached last time uh, about. Um, uh, taking a lighter schedule with some games. Some people seem to be in a, uh, agreement with that. So, uh, with this game, for example, um, what I'm going to be doing is once I'm done with Alan's route, I will check to see if there has been an update on um, either uh, Vincent or uh, Andrus's route. And if there has, I will do those. If there hasn't, I'll move on for now. And then I will come back to this game at a later date to play a route from the construction uh, route and then a route from the police station. Um, it's just for now, I feel like I'm fucking only doing the same thing over and over again. So I would like to do other games in the interim. Uh, stuff like Angels with Scaly Wings, Lagoon Lounge, stuff like that. I, di I did get my hands on a copy of Lagoon Lounge, so that will be probably coming up here soon too. Um, but either way, let's get this episode fucking started, eh? They store today. They, they, they do that. They, they do that. Oh yeah, you yes, do that. We head outside and the rain is oppressive. It batters on my jacket and I have to duck under overhangs. I wish I had an umbrella. I doubt Alan would fit under one though. He doesn't seem to mind the weather as his feet splash into puddles. I jump, I jump over them. The path we usually take is reversed for the first time. I understand where we're going and it's a familiar feeling that comforts me a bit. It's, a li it's the little things that get to me, though. The emptier than normal streets gives something sinister room. Some some give something sinister room to grow. It's in the absence of good intentions that real monsters dwell. We make it to the bar, and something good fills my heart. Seeing the light on and two silhouettes active inside reminds me that there is still something normal. Before I can pull the door open, the big dumb cannon walks right into it. It thuds, and he stumbles back. All the doors that say pull when he pushes, it's gonna get him killed. Hell watches the two of us enter in from the rain. Her hands on her hips, anger blows from his nose. What? You get a pass, but Alan, you need to be a set a bad example. If he's gotta be staying with you, you at least go by his schedule so you're on time. You're wicked late, dude. She goes from mean to sweet in the flick of a switch, nearly coddling me as she lets me sit down. You doing okay there, Zack? Couldn't be doing better, but I'm still living. I see Cody behind the bar. He, he eyes me for the first time. He, he, he eyes me, and for the first time he chuckles. The turtle snort causes everyone to look at him. It's a minute in, and I can tell Cody is acting abnormally abnormal. Well, we still gotta get ready for the night. I guess she can help Cody prep some food. We'll do the heavy lifting tonight. In the kitchen, I do very little. My right forearm is still sore for some reason. Uh, Cody works effortlessly and with speed. His precision slices and dices all manner of things. He slows down and his dark eyes trail over. How'd you do it? Do what? Survive like that. It's always been a mystery to me how things just work out. You know what just occurred to me, literally just now? In Andrus's route, Vec kills us. Is it possible that Vec is a secret Grim Reaper? He could be the one killing me in all the routes, we don't know. Like divine intervention? I mean, after coming here, I don't think I could scoff at religion anymore. It makes me wonder if there's some sort of higher power. There's no such thing as divine intervention or a high power. We're in, we're it, and we're the only ones we can rely on. Well, that's a bit cynical. I've never heard Cody talk with such conviction before. I've never heard Cody talk unprompted, period. Do you know how you did it? What happened when you went under? No, well, I was apparently dead. I could see everything. I think they call that an out-of-body experience. Then everything went black. I was stuck in some sort of muck. I clawed my way out and woke up in a police station. That's all I remember. Did your life flash before your eyes? No. I think we won't have much time to continue this conversation. Cody nods his head towards Helen Allen, walking, talking about the funeral. No other creature out there can have their life flash before their eyes. That's something very human, and when it happens, let me know. 
What the hell? Al enters the kitchen and taps on my shoulder. If you're going with Alan, you best get your butt moving. The service already started, and as usual, he's dragging his feet. I need you two back here before we open. I leave the kitchen and wave goodbye to Cody. <clears throat> I head outside and follow Alan towards the cemetery. Thanks for coming with me. It's the least I could do. Besides, I've not gone to many funerals. Especially one for a monster. I don't want you getting used to them. <clears throat> it's not really a cemetery since typical gravestones are very rare. Markings of graves were more dependent on cultural backgrounds. I see no distinct cross, but a few stone headstones, spires, walls, trees, stone circles, urns, boxes, and ashes arranged in rows. The strangest landmark is a rusting yellow airplane. I find Vincent waiting next to a freshly covered grave that are still raised and disturbed. We approach as most of the service leaves. The two of them meet with a grave in between them, a demilitarized zone for this event. The orange cat is holding a really large book. Can't we be civil just this once? I am if you are. There's a lot of tension between these two. It's, a, it's, it's in the silence of their movements. Vincent holds the book open over the grave for Alan to sign. Alan writes a few sentences. Strangely, the cat looks away from the book as Alan writes. The dog proclaims, Done. Vince recites, Your words will refer your words with your words for fucking sake. Your words for sooth will be with him. He immediately flips the page so no one can read it. I walk up and Vincent asks me, Would you like to sign? Yes. I give a fresh I am given a fresh page to write in, so I start. <clears throat> I only met you once. I only met you once. But once was enough to know you had good intentions. You gave me that note and tried to protect me from horrible things. What'd you leave behind? The note and that key will be cherished. What you leave behind is hope for making of making a better town. I'll protect others, I'll be the hope. I still think I'll be the hope is very No, but I'll be the hope. So I'll protect others. I'll protect Alan and the rest of this town. I'll make this place better. Vincent recites, your words for sooth will be with him. The cat flips the page and reveals a note card stuck to in the binding of the next section. It falls out and floats. Three of us watch as, it, as the wind pushes towards me. I reach down and pick it up. It's the same kind of note card with red ink as the one I found in my cabin and the one that sooth handed me. I read it before Vincent can interject. If you are reading this, I'm dead. However, I have finally brought you all together in a safe place, away from the enemy. Where's Gruff? Gruff's supposed to be here. What's this? I keep reading it out loud. If one of you could ha should have the key, then you are the new four. My big four. You must save this place. In the basement of Town Hall is, bl is the Black Gate. The key that key opens the way. Zack must reach the gate, or everything was for nothing. I flip the card over. To Vincent, forgive yourself. To Alan, find revenge. To Gruff, kill him. To Zack, save us. I stand there in awe. Last wishes from a dead man. Turtle, monster, whatever. Vincent just starts laughing and points behind me and doubles over. I turn and see Gruff in the distance, taking care of two graves. He comes up to us. Uh, I heard everything. Vincent shakes his head and sadly speaks. It's as if he's talking down to the grave. And they killed you because they didn't want us to come together? A drunk, a washed up cop, a messiah complex invalid, and an asshole. Way to go, Sooth. You got him. Then shut up. He died for this. So what? Many have died. Many have died because of his predictions. Look at you. Sooth was right about everything he said, though. He warned everyone, and no one listened. Yes, you did listen, didn't you? You heard him loud and clear, and it was filled with lies to hurt you, saying you could have saved everyone, and then it was your that it was all your fault. His abusive and twisted fortune telling. You're mistaken. That's what he said to you. I know that, but it was his fault. That's why I kicked him out. Alan stays quiet and looks like he just wants to run away. Because he set you up with Amelia? 
jealous. It's attack Vincent again, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so what if I was jealous? It's a crime to want to feel better about living here? Is it a crime to feel one of, is, is it a crime to want to feel better about living here? I had no family, no love, and no one to take care of. No real pleasure. Kitako? Kitako is a job, not a family. Kitako and Amelia are the reason why everything happened. Sooth was right that it was your fault. But we can change things. We can make sure that it never happens again. Don't give me that we can do it gang crap. Once again, look around you. Do you not know what we're up against? Let alone actually getting Alan to focus. Have you even have you seen him sober up have you seen him sober yet, Gruff? It's not a pretty sight. I've been pretty sober tonight, thank you. And this fighting isn't getting us anywhere. Agreed. Although Vincent, although Vincent thinks it's a good idea to take your anger out on others, you won't change his mind on that. It's healthier than how either of you two are dealing with it. You're right. That's why I'm here. That's why I don't have a bottle in my back pocket. I know I've made mistakes and have been running away. You can say that again. A big fat mistake. No wonder I started drinking heavily. You'd drive Andrus drink himself to drink. Hey, 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 stop it. I agree. Can we be back on track? With what? Sneaking into Town Hall and getting in, getting to the basement? Hope that some random key opens up some random door that leads us to the supposed Black Gate. What evidence do we have that that key works, that there is a door, and that there is a gate? Cody told me. Okay, and? Cody says that the gate is in Town Hall. How does your cook know about the gate? I don't know. He's curious about Handrus, and he said he never leaves Town Hall because of the gate. What do we have to lose? Everything has already been taken from us. Our lives. Our lives is what we can lose, God damn it! I can't read for shit today. <laughs> Do you think I value mine? Even you said it was a waste of fur and flesh. For once, you're right. My life? What are you living for? No witty response. Shut up. What about you, Zack? I don't have much to lose either. Then it's settled. We're going- we're getting into trouble again, it seems. Visit moves his glasses and rubs the bridge of his nose. Two nights from now, we'll go. That's when the night guard switch happens. You know that how? I've broken into town hall before, trying to get to find censored pages. I remember that. At least you can remember something. Well, it's time to put this book to rest. And start a new chapter. Don't get all sentimental. Vincent picks up a shovel and digs out a space where the gravestone would go. Instead, he half buries the book in the dirt. It sticks and stands up with Sooth's name etched into the cover. Vincent flashes the bur burial ritual. May these words reach you through the dirt and whisper you to rest forever and ever. Vincent pauses his face, looking sad for once. The rain drips off his fur and he snaps back to reality. Whoop, do humanity. If you have any other business here, go ahead and do whatever. I'm heading back. Cat vanishes into nothing. What? Don't worry, he can go invisible. Let's head back to the bar. I bet Hell and Cody are mad we've been gone so long. I'm heading back home. Tonight's my night off. That's why you're wearing your uniform, huh? You stopping by tonight? Always do. Gruff leaves and I start heading back to the bar with Alan. The walk back is quiet. We're both in thought. Alan, Vincent, and Gruff have a rough history together. I feel like an outsider. And what did Vincent mean by Messiah Complex? Did I really have a messiah complex? Do I think I can save this place? Am I honestly thinking that I can help? What about home? It's in the shower I do most of my thinking, and it's raining, so that's close enough. I wasn't able to think this morning. Alan breaks my train of thought. I make it back to the bar. Before we enter, we hear the place roaring with activity. It's a busy night because of the rain. We walk in, dripping water all over the floor. Hell's at the bar, flabbergasted. Cody is bringing drinks to the tables. Finally, it took you long, too long enough. Well, it was worth it. Help me out, will ya? For the next few hours, the place becomes packed. I see Gruff show up and all the usual suspects. My presence in the bar is nor a minor talking point. No one really cares anymore. I imagine that means now a minor talking point. 
Zach, can you bring this to Rotus, that long-necked one in the corner? Before I can say anything, Hal hands me a tray of food to bring. I head over to the table, and, is, and it is the monster when I first got here. From when I first got here. He seems just as scared of me now as he was then. That, or he has always, he always has a resting bitch face. Oh, Jesus. Zack, what will does it take to kill you? Um, let's not talk. That's, that's not a question to answer. What kind of question is that? I just put the food down and turned to leave. If you think you're safe at staying at Alan's place, you're wrong. I would suggest leaving this town before someone really gets hurt. Gets hurt? <laughs> I'm getting real sick of this xenophobic not welcome here crap. Because <sighs> if, if you see it a lot, confronting is not going to do any good. Just fucking ignore it. He, he has a gun on him. Why would you fucking... I pay this stupid creature no mind. He wants a response from me. He's eager to get a rise. He's like an internet troll. He isn't worth the time. Head back to the bar. Hello instantly notices me. What's wrong this time? I mean, if telling her is no big deal, so just tell her. Oh, Rhodus just threatened me. What'd he do? He said that I'm not safe with Alan and that I should leave before someone gets hurt. Really? Don't worry about him. He's just a bag of hot air. One time he tried pulling a knife on me. I beat the crap out of that turd. He's just a sore loser, you know? If he comes after you again, let me know. I'll make sure he never threatens anyone again. This is a machine gun blitzkrieg of crazy. I need... To, what the hell? <laughs> I need a moment to sit down. I've been taking cayenne... Pe concentrated... Pe pills of concentrated cayenne pepper. Try to help with my thyroid problem because it's supposed to be a metabolism booster. All it's doing is giving me fucking throat burn. I see Alan play with a bottle while he pours it out for a customer. This place could lead to the nicest people to drink. Home invasion, coma, funeral, plans to take on the town, being threatened. Is this town really for me? <laughs> I look around, I've become numb to all the creatures. They no longer stare at me, and I'm, and I'm a monster with just as many problems as the rest of them. Another monster asked me for a drink. Before I can answer, I hear Gruff wheezing and coughing. I turn to see Gruff throw his dish at Cody's face. The gruel-like soup drips down the shark man's chin. The spiders along the bar top and the dish shatters on the hard floor. Gruff nearly falls out of his stool. I remember this. He's grabbing his throat and I can't help it. I think to do the Heimlich maneuver. Alan pushes me out of the way while he hops over the counter. He cradles Gruff who's collapsed to the floor. He, it takes me a moment to process what's going on. I see that Cody doing nothing but smile. What did you do, Cody? Doing my, doing my job. What the fuck did you do? From nowhere, Vincent shows up right next to me. It startles me, just as bad as Gruff's suffering. At this point, the entire bar is silent. He's not breathing well. What poison is this? Cody doesn't respond and just watches Gruff writhe on the floor, trying to breathe. Cody, did you do this on purpose? Why? He doesn't respond to either of us. I will not ask you again, what poison is this? The dark, doll-like eyes of the shark man look up at Vincent. Alan speaks up as if he's trying to comfort Gruff. His voice is soft, but booms, uh, but it booms and barks. If you don't answer him, I will destroy you. With Alan's proclamation of violence, the bar starts to empty out faster than I've ever seen. It only takes a moment for the place to be deserted. A few onlookers stay around. Alan stands up slowly, and his posture is completely different. There's anger and pain in his face, and he continues to watch Gruff choke. Like a ghost, Vincent disappears from sight. I take a step away from them all. I don't want to get caught up. From the back room, a four-legged monstrosity bounds out and comes running towards Alan. It's a large gargoyle-like attack dog. In the short moment I see it rushing down on us, it leaps to take down the wolfman while, it, while his back is turned. In a swift motion, Alan spins and punches it out of the air, swatting it away like a bug. It flies away with such mom Is this really the music for this? It flies away with such momentum that it smashes through a wall. I stumble backwards. What the heck did he just do? It's the drunken boxing man. Cody with eerie smooth movement attacks with a butcher with a butcher knife. Flashes of la of the large blade swings and blurs through the air. Gray fur is shaved off, but Alan's drunken steps and staggers cause him all to miss. In a strange spin and half fall, his large paw grabs the half drunk 
half, grabs a half-drunk drink from a nearby table and he swings it down while dancing through all attempts on his life. All that happens, a sloppy sweep at the shark's legs and a powerful punch send the sideways shark across the room and into a wall of bottles. Is hell supposed to be on screen right now? I got a feeling <laughs> that, the, uh, that the, uh, the, the, the sprite mapping is a little fucked. <laughs> What is my hair doing? That's not important right now. They all shatter as his back impacts into the shelving. Cody pulls himself from the shelving unit, and before he can even take a step away, his arms are chained to the wall. His feet are chained as well. Vincent comes from the ether, from the ether in front of the bloody, boozed, covered glass scratch sharkman. With a snap of his finger, the chains tighten and pull Cody back. I highly doubt you will want to speak and tell us anything, so there's no use in wasting any more energy. With another snap of a finger, a chain wraps around Cody's throat, instantly choking him as it tightens quickly. You can hear the sound of his esophagus collapsing and cracking. Wait, don't kill him. Mercy is an idiot's tool. We have to get him to talk. Zack is right. Two ignorant votes for saving your life, one intelligent vote for killing this pathetic thing, and one absent because he's on the floor incapacitated. A democratic system is flawed, don't you think, Cody? What do you stop wasting time and just do it? Reluctantly, Vincent lets the chain around Cody's neck um, lets the chain around Cody's neck unlatches from the wall. <laughs> the shark coughs in time with gruff. It sucks not breathing, doesn't it? Golden rule, you absolute waste. Throw him in a cell. I thought that was obvious. Do you do what you need to and what you usually do? Don't tell me what I should do. I already know. Okay, Mr. Smarty Pants. Even though they work so well together, they don't seem to like each other. Vincent pulls Cody from the wall and the, and the chains restrain the wobble-legged lagoon monster. I'll take care of Gruff. You two figure out what he did. We'll make him talk, all right. Vincent grabs Cody and pushes him out the door. Why am I going with him? Why did you poison Gruff? He's not going to talk out here. We'll, we'll get him to a cell and take things from here. Cell? You'll see. With Cody and Chains, we enter the library. Kotaku is by the door, waiting, pa waiting patiently for us. Did Mr. Cody do bad? Have we met Kotaku in this route yet? I don't think we have. Very bad. He's going to say, we've seen this part. We've seen this. We've seen this. Let's get him to the cell. Alright, we're down in the cell now. At least this way I can explain that you were involved and you complicate matters. Explain to who? No response. I guess we should get down to it. Hey, tell me what you did to Gruff. Why, what did you poison him with? Why, how do we fix him? No response. Alright, well if Gruff is going to die, can you at least tell me why you did it? No response. We don't do the mind reader thing. Uh, we did that last time. What do you want? Gruff wasn't the target. I don't think we tried Gruff was the target last time, so let's... If this is some roundabout way to remove Gruff from the picture to get someone else, you should have... You could have just poisoned them. What do you have against Gruff? I barely know him, so I can't imagine I was a real target. It's not about you, but I can understand your fear. This town is out to get you, but I'm not. You're not my target. Gruff was, is, along with a few others. The shark calls... Along the floor, his tail swinging, and he makes it up to the bars. I kneel down close and listen to his whispers. I'll tell you how to help Gruff if you help me. This is some Sons of the Lambs interaction. A quid pro quo. Yes, I need you to continue where I left off. You must find the right one. The right one? Whatever it is, I'll do it. My only goal right now is to keep Gruff alive. Don't trust Gruff until the right one is found. Trust will only get you killed like so many before you. Only live with distrust and protect yourself. Get to the point. Go to Andrus, the mayor, and ask him a few questions. I know he'll let you in. Ask him if he's in charge of this place. Then ask him if he rules the gate. The last question you need to ask him is how many chairs are left. You tell me his responses. If they're right, I'll help you. That's it? Just a bunch of questions? After that, there may be more things I need for you to do things to do before my time is up. Now go, before time is up for Gruff. Bring the right answers back and I'll tell you how to save him. I stand up and leave. I make to the stairs and a familiar voice calls to me from behind. Those are some very specific questions. Were you, were you were eavesdropping? I question him without even turning around. How is it that everyone is so dumb and forgets I can be invisible? I did forget for some reason. 
I guess we believe what we see. Seeing is believing, but belief can fail you. Remember in the truth, knowledge can never fail you. Now go, Zack. Head up the stairs. Back onto the street and see an objective to take care of. The streets were empty as well, mostly empty. I see Crane rushing off to go somewhere. Didn't notice me in the slightest. I head down to Town Hall. I ponder those questions. They seem cryptic in an almost any answer kind of way. The questions you ask when you know the answer to them. They're the worst kinds of questions. They entrap the victim in, in a passive-aggressive game of chess. This whole place is a passive-aggressive game of chess. I'm a bit hesitant to see the mayor. Andrus seems like he would be a tough cookie. Anxiety starts to fill my steps. Hopefully I'll be able to extract some useful information from the mayor. Just those three questions. I'm making the dark steps to the town hall. I see countless demons that resemble Vec. Not perfectly, but similar. They're all wearing suits and talking in the rain. As soon as my foot touches the first black step, they all turn. Eyes of the countless suited demons point right at me. I send the stairs a little freaked out. All the discussions stop, and they still they're still all perfectly still. The rain is the only movement. I open I, the front door to town hall feels out of place in the rest of this arch architecture. I push it open and find Vec and his cart. Well, I think we're going to talk to Vec in the next episode. So thank you all very much for watching. On the next one, we will talk to Vec. I just said that. I've got to stop doing that. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the trained unprofessional. Speaking for the voices in my head when I say, until next time, fare thee well. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Good God, that cayenne thing. It's not working. i got to do something else. Shit. If you guys got any tips on how to improve a low thyroid, let me know. This shit doesn't.